Hi guys, welcome back to Mysteries Channel. Today's video is going to be the end of the Diné Bahane. We were going to find out what happened with the twins and if they'd make it to their father, the sun. The twins entered the house of the sun before the sun had completed his journey across the sky. They saw a woman sitting against the western wall and they saw two handsome young men, Black Thunder and Blue Thunder. No one spoke to them. We are from Banded Rock Mountain, the twins said. Our mother is changing woman and we have been told that the sun is our father. We have followed the holy trail to seek his help. The woman remained silent. Black Thunder and Blue Thunder approached the twins and wrapped four blankets around them. They wrapped them in the blankets of red dawn and the blankets of blue daylight and the blankets of yellow evening and the blanket of black darkness. Then Black Thunder and Blue Thunder lifted the bundled twins and laid them high on a shelf. After a while, the twins heard the sun enter. He removed his glowing hot disc from his back and hung it on the wall. Who has come here today, he asked the woman. She did not answer. From above, I saw two strangers come here, said the sun. Where are they? The woman remained silent. I know that two strangers are here, said the sun, and I demand to know where they are. The two young men did come here, said the woman, and they claim that they are your sons. You have promised me that I am the only woman you see. So whose sons are these? And then she went to the bundle and pulled on the blankets. The twins fell to the floor and at once grasped the hoop of feathers that Spider Woman had given them. The son said, I will see if you are my sons. And he seized them at once and he hurled them against the sharp spikes of the shell wall on the eastern wall of his house. The twins holding the sacred hoop bounced back unharmed. The sun seized them again and hurled them against the turquoise spikes on his southern wall. Again, they held the sacred hoop and they bounced back unharmed. You must survive two more tests, said the sun. He took them outside where there was a great sweat house and he started a fire to heat four large rocks within it. While he did this, the wind came up to the twins and whispered, You must dig a tunnel to the other side and hide in it after you have answered his question. The twins dug the tunnel while the sun prepared the fire and hit its opening with a stone. The sun then commanded them to enter the sweat lodge. After a while, the sun said, is it hot in there? Yes, the twins said as they hid in the tunnel that they had dug. Then the sun suddenly poured a great quantity of water through the hole at the top of the sweat lodge. And when it hit the hot rocks, they exploded and the hot steam hissed. After a while, the twins crawled back into the sweat lodge. The sun called, is it hot in there? expecting to get no answer. But the twins answered, not so hot as before. The son opened the door. Perhaps you truly are my sons, he said. Come inside and we will smoke. He turned and entered his house. And as he did, Nilchi the wind came beside the twins. The tobacco is poisonous, he whispered. The spittle of the spiny caterpillar will protect you. At once, the twins saw a spiny caterpillar on the path. They took some of its spittle into their mouths. Inside, the sun brought forth a turquoise pipe from a high shelf on his eastern wall and lit it with the red sun disk. He puffed on it himself and then he passed it to the twins, who each puffed on it themselves. What sweet tobacco, said the twins. Seeing this, the sun said, truly you are my sons. Now tell me why you've come. Father, they said, we have come because the alien monsters are killing our people. The giant devours our people. The horned monster devours them. And so does the one who kills with his eyes. Give us weapons so that we may destroy the big giant and the others. The sun looked in all four directions and saw that the woman was not in the house. Then he said, I will help you. But the big giant, he is also my son. I will give you the weapons so that you may fight the monsters. But I am the one who will strike the first blow when you fight against the big giant. I must do that myself. Then he gave the twins helmets and shirts of hard flint scales and chain lightning arrows and sheet lightning arrows and deadly sunbeam arrows. And to each, he gave the stone knife with a hard blade and the stone knife with the broad blade. When the sun left on his journey across the top of the sky the next morning, he took the twins with him. At noon, they came to the hole at the top of the sky. Now show me where you live, said the sun. With the help of Nilchi the wind, the twins pointed to the four sacred mountains of the four directions and Banded Rock, the Traveler's Circle Mountain, near the center. We live near there, said the boys. All you have told me I know to be true, my sons, said the sun. You will succeed against the monsters, and in your war against them, you will make the final passage from boyhood to manhood. Then he sent down a streak of lightning onto the top of Blue Bead Mountain that was home to the big giant. It is said that the twin sons descended from the sky to the top of Blue Bead Mountain, and 
came down the mountain on its south slope. When they walked on to Tocito, which some call Warm Spring, they found the Holy Boy and Spirit Girl. Where are you going? asked Holy Boy. We have come to find the big giant, said the twins. He is huge and very powerful, said Holy Boy. Each day he comes late in the day to Tocito to drink from the lake. The brothers walked to Warm Spring and stood beside the large lake. They took one from the chain lightning arrows their father had given to them and shot it at a slab of high rock overhanging the base of Blue Bead Mountain. The arrow struck the rock with such force that it shattered and fell where it remains today with such weapons. We cannot fail, they said. Late in the day, they heard the big giant approaching. His footsteps shook the canyon walls. Then they saw him come to the water's edge and stoop to drink. He drank deeply four times until most of the water had gone from the lake. Then he saw the reflection of the twins in the water, and he stood and he stared at them. He shouted at them. The twins did not understand what he said, but they shouted back to him. Then Big Giant paced back and forth and said, What are the two beautiful things that I see, and how shall I kill them? The twins shouted back, What beautiful big thing is walking about, and how shall I kill it? Nilji the wind came to them and whispered in their ear that Big Giant was their elder, and he should be given the right of first strike, as they were destroying the child of the sun. Then suddenly Nilji the wind called, Beware! Jump! The twins found themselves standing on the end of a rainbow, just as the Big Giant hurled his great black knife at them. The rainbow raised up, and the knife passed below their feet. Nilji the wind whispered, Keep low now and the big giant hurled his great blue knife. It passed over them. Other winds said, jump to the right, and the great yellow knife of big giant passed just to their left. This is his last weapon, whispered the wind. Jump to the left now, and the twins leapt to the left just as a white knife with many points passed to the right of them. The twins were about to use one of their own weapons when a blinding flash of lightning came out of the sky and struck the giant on his head. The heavens shook with thunder. And the giant shook, but stayed on his feet. Then the elder of the two brothers shot a chain lightning arrow at the big giant. The giant dropped to his knees, but stood again. The second brother then shot an arrow of sheet lightning, which struck the giant in his chest. He fell to both knees and began to fall forward, catching himself with his hands. Then the first brother shot a deadly sunbeam arrow and hit the giant in his head. Big giant fell down face first on the ground, Blood flowed in great streams from the giant's mouth, and kneeled to the wind said, Stop the blood before it reaches the water. It will become alive. The twins ran to block the flow of the water, and it remains on the ground today near the spring at the foot of Blue Bead Mountain. The twins approached the body of the giant and saw that he was dead. The younger brother removed the giant's scalp as proof. Around his body lay many chips of flint from his armor. The twins hurled the flint in each of the four directions, saying, from now on, the people of the earth shall use you. Then the brother said to the younger brother, I will call you he who cuts life out of the enemy. And the younger brother said to his older brother, and I will call you Monster Slayer. It is the name by which you shall always be known. Then the two brothers climbed back to the top of Blue Bead Mountain, where they had landed after descending from the sky, and each sang a song in praise of their father the sun. And as he neared the end of his journey across the sky, they rested there for the night. The next morning, the two boys started for home. Along the trail, they met Talking God and Water Sprinkler. Well done, grandsons, he said. You are worthy of all that we taught you. You have served your people well. And the two gods each sang a song to celebrate the victory of the twins over the giant. These two songs are sung today whenever a victory is celebrated. When the brothers came close to the home of Changing Woman, their mother, and first man and first woman, they hid the armor and the wet in the bushes. And when inside, Changing Woman rejoiced when she saw them. Where have you been, she said. I thought a monster devoured you. We followed the holy trail, said the elder brother, Monster Slayer, and we came upon Spider Woman, and she told us to go to the house of our father, the sun. He gave us weapons, and we killed the big giant. Do not say this, said First Man. No one can kill a big giant. Then the brothers led their mother and grandparents outside and showed them the scalp of big giant, and they rejoiced. Together they sang and danced to celebrate the victory. Monster Slayer, the elder brother, wished to fight the other monsters, it is said. He asked Changing Woman where the horned monster lived. Changing Woman said, He lives at Big E. Hudson, at the foot of the mountains. But you have done enough, my son, and the monsters are hard to kill. 
It was hard for you to give birth to me, said Monster Slayer. Where Horned Monster lives, it is dangerous, said Changing Woman. To all the ends of the earth, there is no such place as dangerous, answered Monster Slayer. The brothers together made two prayer sticks with the medicine of the plant called Western Wallflower, each three finger widths long, and laid them in a turquoise dish. Then Monster Slayer said to who cuts the life out of enemy, my brother, I will go alone to fight the horned monster. You stay here and watch the holy medicine sticks. If a sunbeam should light either one, you will know that I am in danger and you must help me. Otherwise, stay and protect the others. At dawn, Monster Slayer set out to find the horned monster. He came to a broad plain at the foot of the mountains and he saw a horned monster laying at rest. It had hair like a moose, a great pair of horns. While Monster Slayer stood watching, Gopher came to him. I wonder what you are doing here, he said. There is someone here I seek, said Monster Slayer. Do you not fear the horned monster who feeds on your kind, asked Gopher. Now that you mention it, it is he that I seek, said Monster Slayer. I wish to kill him. I can help you with that, said Gopher, but I want a piece of his hide. You shall have it, said Monster Slayer. Then Gopher dug a tunnel right up to Horn Monster. He returned and said, I have tunneled right up to where he lies. And from that spot, I have tunneled to the east and the south and the west and the north. You can travel beneath him and shoot an arrow straight up into his heart. Monster Slayer could not enter the tunnel because it was too small. Raise your right leg, said Gopher. While Monster Slayer raised his right leg, Gopher blew into her tunnels four times, and each time it became larger. Then Monster Slayer entered the tunnel and crawled to where Horned Monster lay above the opening. He shot a chain lightning straight up into Horned Monster. The monster roared and tore at the earth with his horns. Monster Slayer hid in the tunnel to the east. Horned Monster tore at the earth around the tunnel. Before it could reach him, Monster Slayer ran into the tunnel of the south. Horned Monster began to tear at the earth at that spot with his horns, and Monster Slayer ran into the tunnel of the west. Horned Monster dug into the earth at that spot. He was now weak, and he fell and lay down. Monster Slayer crept back up the full length of the tunnel to where Gopher had started it and climbed out. There, a little old man dressed in tight leggings and a thin shirt wearing a cap with a feather approached him. This was Ground Squirrel. What brings you to this place? said Ground Squirrel. I'm looking at something, said Monster Slayer. I wonder what you are looking at, said Ground Squirrel. I am looking at Horned Monster, said Monster Slayer. I wonder if I need fear him. I will go over there and I will see if he's dead, said Ground Squirrel. If he no longer breathes, I will climb up on his horns and dance and sing. If he is dead, I want some of his blood to decorate my face. Truly, little brother, said Monster Slayer, you shall have it. Ground Squirrel went to the Horned Monster, saw that he was dead, put some of his blood on his face, and danced and sang. The face of every ground squirrel bears the red streak to this day. And so it is that there has always been goodwill between Earth's surface people and ground squirrels. Gopher came back and removed some of Horn Monster's skin and put it on his own back. And so it is that the back of gophers is thickly covered to this day. And there has been harmony between Earth's surface people and gophers to this day. And Gopher gave part of Monster's bowels and lung to Monster Slayer to take back as proof that Horned Monster was slain. Monster Slayer returned to his home and showed the lung and bowel of Horned Monster to Changing Woman and First Woman. They danced and chanted in victory. And now, two of the monsters were dead, and the plan of the holy people was being fulfilled. In a few days, Monster Slayer had killed Monster Eagle and the monster who kicks people down the cliff, and the monster that kills with his eyes. Surely, all the alien monsters have all been destroyed now, said Changing Woman. Nilchi the Wind whispered into the ear of Monster Slayer, Some still survive. Old Age Woman remains. She looks like a frail creature, but she slowly saps the strength with the passing years. Beware of her. Monster Slayer said to his mother, Tell me where I can find the dwelling place of the one who brings old age. There is no need for you to seek her, said Changing Woman. Nilchi the wind whispered, She lives among the mountains at the place of the mountain sheep. When he arrived at the place of the mountain sheep, Monster Slayer saw an old woman walking slowly toward him, leaning on a staff. Her back was bent, her hair was white, her arms and her hands were bony. Old Grandmother, I have come to kill you, he said. I do you no harm, grandson, she replied. Think it over before you kill me. Once the people discovered that I no longer slowly sap their strength with the passing of years and finally devour them, they will have no children. It is better that people should pass their wisdom and responsibilities to those who are younger and finally die. I will spare you, said Monster Slayer, and he returned without a trophy. Cold woman still lives, whispered Nilchi the wind to Monster Slayer. 
Each year, she freezes the earth. She covers the streams with ice. She kills plants so that the vines bear no melons and the stalks bear no corn. Mother, demanded Monster Slayer, tell me where I might find the dwelling of Cold Woman. Changing Woman refused to answer, but Nilchi the Wind whispered, She lives high on the summit of Debek Nitsa'a, where the mountain sheep are. Monster Slayer traveled there and found a lean old woman sitting above the tree line without clothing, on the snow. No roof sheltered her. Her skin was pale as snow. Grandmother, said Monster Slayer, I am here to kill you. You may kill me, said Cold Woman, but once I am dead, it will always be hot on earth. The land will dry up. The springs will cease to flow. And over the years, people will perish. Listening to her words, Monster Slayer said, I will spare you, and he returned home without a trophy. The poverty creature still lives, whispered Nilchi into his ear. They destroy people by gradually using up possessions. They will leave no tools for anyone to use, no clothing to wear. Monster Slayer asked Changing Woman where poverty creatures dwelled, but she refused to tell him. They live on the Roof Butte Mountain, said Nilchi the Wind. Monster Slayer traveled there and found a tattered old man and a filthy old woman. Their garments were in shreds, and in their house they had no goods. They had no food, no blankets, no bowls. Grandmother, grandfather, said Monster Slayer, it gives me no pleasure, but I am here to kill you. Then the people will not suffer from want. Think a moment, they said. If we were to die, people would not replace anything or improve on their tools. By causing things to wear out, we lead people to invent new things. Garments become more beautiful. Tools become more useful. People appreciate what they have. Monster Slayer said, what you say is true. I will spare you. And he returned home with no trophy. Hunger man still exists, whispered Nilchi. He lives at the white spot of grass. When he arrived, Monster Slayer found 12 ravenous creatures who ate anything that grew. The largest of them was Hunger Man. I have come here to kill you, said Monster Slayer. Then people will not feel the pangs of hunger and they will not starve for want of food. I do not blame you for wanting to kill me, said Hunger Man. But if you kill us, people will lose their taste for food. They will never know what the pleasure of cooking and eating is. But if we were to live, you would continue to plant seeds and harvest crops and they will remain skill hunters. And after hearing these words, Monster Slayer returned without a trophy. When he returned home to his mother, Changing Woman, he removed the sheath wherein he carried the stone knife that his father, the son, had given him. He realized now that his work was done. He sang, Now the enemy slayer arrives. From the house of the jagged blades he arrives, from where the sharp knives hang he arrives, and the treasure he has won are yours, O oh you gods. Changing woman and the monster slayer and the younger twin brother who cuts the life out of the enemy, who was also known as the child of the water, now heard a voice from the east chanting a reply. With the monster slayer I come, from the house of the dark stone blade I come, from where the dark stone knives hang I come. The giver of the sacred hoops, I come, I come, I come, the dreaded one. Changing woman said, this is the voice of your father. Dress yourselves quickly. And then she left the Hogan. The son entered and greeted the twins. To Monster Slayer, he said, my son, you have slain all the enemies of the people. Monster Slayer replied, those who should die, I have killed. I have been among the highest peaks and through the deepest canyons. I have been to the edge of the waters and I have been to the boundaries of the sky. And wherever I went, I found no one who is not a friend of our people. Then your work is done, said the son. I will take the weapons I gave you back with me. Tell your mother that after four days I will return. I wish to speak with her on the top of Great Spruce Mountain. And he departed. After four days, Changing Woman went to the summit of Great Spruce Mountain and sat on the rock near the spot where she had first felt the warmth of the sun deep within her body. The sun came and sat beside her. He tried to embrace her, but she stopped him. What do you mean by that, she said. I want you for my own, he replied. Come to the west and make a home with me there. I wish no such thing, she said. I am lonely, said the sun. What good is all that I do if I must endure my days and nights all alone? After a long time of silence, changing woman spoke. I am told you have a beautiful house in the east. I want such a house in the west. I want it built floating on shimmering water away from the shore so that the earth's surface people will not bother me with their quarrels. I want white shell and blue shell and turquoise. I want heliotis shell. I want soapstone, agate, redstone, and jet. Because I will live there alone, 
While you are gone each day, I want animals to keep me company. Give me buffalo and deer and mountain sheep and jackrabbits, prairie dogs and muskrats. Provide me with these things and I shall go with you to the west. What do you mean by making such demands of me, said the son. Why should I provide you with all of these things? I will tell you why, she said. You are male and I am female. You are of the sky and I am of the earth. You are constant in your brightness, but I must change with the seasons. Remember that I willingly let you enter my body and gave birth to your sons, enduring pain to bring them into the world. As different as we are, we are of one spirit. As dissimilar as we are, you and I are of equal worth. As different as we are, there must be solidarity between us. There can be no harmony in the universe unless there is harmony between us. If there is to be harmony, my request must matter to you. There is to be no more coming from me to you than there is from you to me. At first, the son gave no reply. He carefully weighed all that she said to him. Then slowly he placed his arm around her. She allowed him to do so. Then he promised her that all things she wished for she would have. She would have a house in the west. She would have gems and animals. They would dwell together in harmony. When changing woman was ready to depart for her new home, the Mirage people and the ground mist people prepared to go with her. She said goodbye to first man and first woman and to her sons. And then the holy people passed through the mountains at Red Knife and they celebrated her betrothal to the sun. Her hips widened and her breasts grew large. The elk and the buffalo multiplied and some left her herd to form other herds and spread across the land. And at last, she and her party and the animals came to the end of the land and then to her floating house beyond the shore. Then Monster Slayer and his brother, he who cuts life from the enemy, waterborne, traveled to where the Pine River flows into the San Juan, and they continued to live below the earth. A petroglyph was made on the canyon wall just above the water level to mark the place. Then the sun said that it was time for the first holy people to depart from the surface of the fourth world. These four who had come from the first world were first man, first woman, great coyote, and coyote first angry. They traveled east beyond the house of the sun and took all their powers with them. As they began to travel, first woman turned and said, When I wish to do so, I will send back death from disease, and the sign will be the howl of the coyote. Then the four holy people who had came up from the third world departed as well. They were talking God, water sprinkler, house God, and black God, the God of fire. As they departed, talking God said, If anyone sees us, it will be a sign that an enemy is coming into the country. If he hears us call, that same person will be killed by an enemy before the day is over. And so saying, they all returned to their homes and their powers went with them. Changing woman began to live in her floating white bead house beyond the shore in the west, and in her home on a shelf running east to west on the south side were four jars of water. The first was the black water jar which contained black cloud and the male rain. The second was the blue water jar which contained blue cloud and the male rain. The third jar was the yellow water jar which contained the yellow cloud and the male rain, and the fourth jar was the white jar which contained the white cloud and the male rain. On the north side of the home, was a shelf running from west to east, and on it were also four jars. The first jar was black water jar, which contained the black vapor and the female rain. The second jar was blue water jar, which contained the blue vapor and the female rain. The third jar was the yellow jar, which contained the yellow vapor and the female rain. And the last, the white jar, contained the white vapor and the female rain. Other jars contained the seeds of the plants and the flowers. As changing woman walks in the four directions from her house, she undergoes a change. She comes out of her house, an old woman, with a white bead walking stick. She walks towards the east and returns to middle age and she carries no walking stick. To the south, she walks and she returns a young woman. She walks to the west and becomes a maiden. She goes to the north and returns a young girl. Often, she and the sun are in harmony. At times, they argue and the sun does not return to her home at the end of the journey. At those times, the sky is stormy and the whole world suffers. All right, guys, that's the Diné Bahane. There are many versions of this that are slightly different from other versions. In some versions of the Diné, we're in the fifth world and not the fourth world. I will link two different sources below. The one that I got was off of Wikipedia, and then I will link another book that goes into much greater detail if you're interested in that. And I believe in that book, we are in the fifth world as well. Names are different, but the names actually still mean the same thing. For instance, I think they call Black God 
which sometimes is black yi in the Diné Bahane, but in this book he is Bago Chitty, and in other versions his name is something else. But always, even if his name is Black God, Bago Chitty, or Black Yi, it still means Black God or God of Fire. Anyway, that's what I have for today. I hope you guys have yourselves a very great day.